Hello fellow problem solvers. So there are you doing a problem that's an identity. Prove this identity in combinatorics. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of five minutes, ideally 20, not more than an hour. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next five minutes. But what's, what ideas do you have here? So now without further ado, let's begin. And for me, the idea here is, let me see, can I do this inductively? This maybe like the first big picture thing. Can I prove this via induction? And it's like, if I know this, how can I prove that n plus one choose one times one plus two times n plus one choose two and so on and so forth. n plus one times n plus one choose n is equal to n plus one times two to the n. If I know this, can I prove this? And here's where I invite you to pause for two minutes and ask yourself, what would you do next here? How would you prove this? And for me, when I see this, you know, I have n plus one and n choose, n choose two, n choose j, n plus one choose j. I say, in how many ways can I choose an object from a pile of n plus one of them? And how do I connect this to n? Well, I, there's two cases. I either pick the first object or I don't. If I pick the first object, in how many ways can I choose the, the remaining of the remaining n objects, how now many ways can I choose uh, j minus one of them? Well, I can choose and choose j minus one of them. If I don't pick the first object, in how many ways can I choose the remaining j? Well, it's n choose j. So now when I know this, so I'm trying to prove this, and I know due to this identity that this thing right here is going to be equal to what? It's going to be one times, so what are we going to have? So we're going to first have one times n choose one, plus two times n choose two, plus all the way till, and now we're going to have n plus one times n choose n, right? n plus one, actually let's get to, oh this is n plus one choose n plus one actually. We're going to have n times n choose n, and when we get here, we're going to have, what's it called? We'll have n plus one times n choose n plus one. This here is zero. That's the first thing we have. That's when we just like get from this to n, n choose j. When we get to n choose j plus one, we'll get one times n choose zero plus two times n choose one plus all the way till we're going to have n times n choose n minus one and n plus one times n choose n, right? That's what this thing is going to be equal to. Now here I invite you to pause for another two to three minutes, try to push the problem further and here's the next step. So we know that this thing right here, so we know this thing, Already we know this is equal to by induction n times two to the n minus one. Now, what do we need this rest, the rest of this to be equal to? Because we have this by induction, we need, so we need n plus one, two to the n minus n two to the n minus one. This is, so uh, we can have this as two to the n minus one n plus two to the n minus one n plus two to the n minus n two to the n minus one. These cancel out and we need the rest of this to be equal to this thing right here. Two to the n minus one plus two to the n minus one times n plus this uh, two to the n. So we need this plus some two to the n. How are we going to get that from here? I invite you again, pause for another, you know, say five minutes and ask yourself, you know, how are you going to get this? And the answer is, well, there's two ways to go about this. One way is this is close to what this is, but not quite. Right here, I am missing what? I am actually, I'm not missing, I'm adding too much. I'm adding one extra of these. Here I'm, also, here, I'm also adding one extra. Here, I'm also adding one extra. So let me just take those extras. Let me have them as 
n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus n choose n. And then the rest is going to be 0 times n choose 0, 1 times n choose 1, plus 2 times n choose 2. Oh, looky, looky, looky what we have. n times n choose n. And then again, we have this part here by induction is going to equal this. And what is this going to equal to? n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus all the way till n choose n. Well, this is equal to 2 to the power of n. Why? Because on one hand, this is a way, this is the total number of permutations. Actually, what is this? This is the total number of subsets of the set 1 through n. Right? That's what this signifies. Why is it the total number of subsets? Well, because for every number, 1, 2 through n, when you're picking a subset, you're picking for every number. Is 1 going to be in it? Yes or no? That gives you two options. Is 2 in it? Yes or no? Another two gives you 2 times 2 options. 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the n options for every set. And on the other hand, how many sets are there with zero elements? n choose zero. With one, it's n choose one. With n, with two is n choose two. With n is n choose n. By definition of what n choose n, n choose k is. So this is one way of solving the problem. It's very algebraic and it's very much, okay, let me just like go, go through it. But another way to solve the problem is to think at the beginning, what is this quantity right here? Does it signify anything? And here's an important technique that I want that I'm going to now show you. The technique is double counting or counting in two different ways. I call it double counting because two reasons. One, it, it sounds nicer to me. Secondly, it's less things to write on the board. So how are we going to count this in two different ways? Why do that to begin with? Well, we're having again choose k times k. We're having we need to prove an identity. Sometimes we want to prove identities, especially with choosing things, when you're choosing things. You want to see, can I make a bijection on something, or can I count some quantity in different ways? Like, what does this signify? What is this, and what does this signify? And I ask you to pause for another five, ten minutes, and ask yourself, how can, what sort of quantity does this, can this signify? And then can we prove that that quantity in another way is also equal to this? Now's the time to pause. And here's the idea. So, 1 times n choose 1. So, what is n choose 1? So, those are all the sets that have, or all the subsets of 1 through 1, the sets 1 through n, which have exactly one element. n choose 2 is all the subsets of the set 1 through n, which have exactly two elements. 3 n choose 3 is all the subsets which have 3 elements, and we are multiplying it by 3, multiplying it by 2. We choose out all these subsets of n, which have 2 elements, and we multiply the number of those subsets by 2. So what is this sum signifying? Well, it's signifying the when you choose all the subsets of n, of 1 through n, how many elements in total did you choose over all of them? Okay, that's what that's a mouthful. There must be a better way to say that. But it's pretty much like how many so I, so I choose all the subsets. The subsets are one, two, all the way till then n, and then you have one, two, one, three, two, four, like every, you have all of them. And then the question is, all these subsets, how many elements do they have in total? And on one hand, it's this. Because a subset with k elements, is going, there's going to be n choose k subsets with k elements. And you want to count every element once in each of those subsets, so you multiply it by k. You go over all the possible subsets, all the possible number of subsets, and you get this. Now that's what it is on one hand. Now, why is it equal to this on the other hand? I invite you to pause for two to three minutes and figure that out. And the answer is, well, n is telling us every number, 2 to the n minus 1, is in 2 to the n minus 1 subsets. Why is that true? 
And the answer is, well, if I pick K, in how many subsets is it going to be a part of? Well, it's going to be a part of, I'll have n minus one of the other elements to make subsets from, right? And then I'll just add K to any subset. And that's going to give me all the sets, subsets of one through n, where K is a member of that subset. So if I choose zero elements, I'll have K. If I choose two elements, say I choose two and then, and K is not equal to either one, then I'll have two K and then, right? And now how many subsets are there for, for the set with N minus one elements? Well, by the thing we did previously, there are two to the N minus one. Now, every element is going to be a part of to the n minus one of these subsets, there are n elements. So all the elements in total are going to be, so in total we're going, all the elements in total are going to be part of this many, are going to appear in the sets this many times. And that is this number on the other hand, on one hand it's this, on the other it's this. And so we are done. This is a very important technique to know because it's a global technique, you know, it's a technique let me look at a quantity and find the same thing in two different ways. And then I can find a value. And that's actually a very interesting thing. And it's a bit difficult when you're not trained in that and you're just used to just like doing the, the, the algebraic stuff we did beforehand. So it's important to know both. This is, I think, a cool solution to the problem. And as always, Thanks for problem solving.